Alright, welcome back to Nick Landis Comic Corner Classic Legend Known Classics. This is episode number 21008 and episode number 2002. This first trade is a finale for a run, and the other one's the start of a brand new run. First up we have is The Swamp Thing, Volume 3, Parliament of Gears. This basically collects the remaining six issues of Swamp Thing, Volume 8. I say this is volume. This one I think has the word "the" as my first part title. This technically is actually volume seven. This is now officially become the second second volume of Swamp Thing I officially fully reviewed. Yeah, and it's also longer than the previous volume, which is only six issues. It's like, yeah. So, Parliament Gears is basically Swamp Thing versus the Parliament Gears, the new Parliament that basically has to fight in this run, which of course is really good. Still done by Ram V and Mike Perkins. This actually is the end of the run. Yeah. And the way this reads, like, it's very similar. Like, the way that Mike Perkins does the artwork here. Ooh, Like, I'll show that here because the pop is like kind of gross here. Um, it feels a little bit like stuff on the Vertigo run for Swamp Thing. That's what it kind of feels like in this book. Reading this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, we also have outside heroes that pop up in this book, aside from, well... So, who appears book aside from the Swamp Thing? Well... Thinking who? Who? Who shows up in here? Well, first up, we have Hal Jordan, the Green Lantern. Which, I think this is the first time Randy's ever written Hal Jordan, I can think of. Uh, basically, Lev Kemi, I think that's the guy's name is, yes. Yeah, Hal Jordan here, of course, is really gorgeous art by Mike Perkins. I think he might be the only person that's like, really? Green Lantern? Now you're probably thinking, do you have Green Lantern show up in the Scott Snyder slash Charles Show run? No. I think, like, the only outside heroes we saw were just, like, Dark and Superman. And now, man, that was it. And then we have, well... Swamp Thing become this. Yeah, it becomes a Green Lantern. Yes. Swamp Thing becomes a Green Lantern to fight the, the Parliament of Gears, which he ends up beating it by the end of the trade. Also, throughout this book, I think he's trying to reunite with Abby Arcane, his, his girlfriend slash wife. That's what he's trying to do here. Mm-hmm. Eventually, of course, basically, like, oh, just finished up here. And then he goes back to basically four. And Swamp Thing kind of back to normal. Yeah. And this is pretty much the end of the run. Uh, an excellent run. Now, surprising, now this book is really good. This book, a 9.5 out of 10. Uh, final thoughts on this run. Now, I initially had heard this book was supposed to be 10 issues. That was the plan. As a matter of fact, it was solicited to be 10 issues. But I think it increased it to 16 because the book was selling really well. And I think you were loving this book. Now, if you're curious though, how long has it been since it's been a Swamp Thing like kind of series like this? Well, there had been one since the original creator did it back in 2014. This came out in 2021, believe it or not. This book just ended just last year. So the first time in six years we got an actual Swamp Thing book. And it's good. Really good. I think the only Swamp Thing book I'm watching right now is Deep Green. That's the only Swamp Thing book right now. But I guess DC must realize, hey, Swamp Thing is popular. Keep the book going. And of course, also, I think that this also gave time to Ram V to wrap up the story really well. And when this book concluded, you probably think, okay, is he doing any more books in DC right now? Well, he's doing Tech Comics right now. So... He's still working both, too. It's, it's interesting, though, like that, where he's one of two writers who do books at both companies. The other is Philip Kennedy Johnson. And you're thinking, really? The guy writes action comics currently? What book gives you Marvel? Alien. And he still does it. Yep, he does. All right, next up we have is... Captain America, Sentinel of Liberty, Volume 1, Revolution. 
collect the first six issues of Sin Liberty Volume 2 and Captain America number 0. I say Volume 2 because this actually is an old title from the 90s. Well, not this book anyways. The title of the book is, yes, there was a book called Captain America and Sin Liberty published back in the 1990s, written by Mark Wade, and kind of basically it was kind of like a side book with, to the main book. This book is done by Jackson Lonsing and Colleen Kelly. Yes. Now, this particular book, aside from what, what happened in issue zero, the main book, now here's the thing about the main book. Now, there's no appearance in here by Sharon Carter. Sharon Carter is nowhere to be seen. I don't know why, but she isn't. Also, like in the case of the Spirit of Truth book, where Sam's got a partner, the uh, Teenage Falcon, Cap, Steve Rogers, has the Winter Soldier as his partner. Which is interesting to say the least. Now, this of course is a brand new direction for the character. Now, apparently, they're going to secrets behind the gray area behind his shield. Which you're thinking, wait, why the heck would there be an organization up? Apparently, this is not much as a retcon here. Or apparently, this organization, apparently, his shield is actually their property. This hidden secret society. This shield is their property. Which makes no frickin' sense how even Cap realizes, though. Yeah, basically, your whole idea is bullcrap. The fact this is shield here. She was mine. I rightfully won. I basically fought battles with this damn thing. And you claim this is yours? Yeah, that's why it's written here. Also, Peggy Carter's in here. And they also have a thing where Winter Soldier goes undercover like he's James by playing Baccarat. And he runs into Peggy. Yep. Yeah, I'll get to more stuff with, with Cap. Like, but like here's Peggy. And Bucky says, who do you really work for, Peggy Carter? Yeah. Peggy Carter! Captain America's World War II girlfriend. Now, unless you missed the previous run, you're probably thinking, wait, Nick, she's been dead since 2011. What the heck is going on here? Well, in the previous run, the writer revealed, thanks to the machinations of the Cosmic Cube, it brought her back to life. And it de-aged her. Yes, Peggy Carter, who had aged naturally compared to Steve Rogers, was de-aged. And now she's smoking hot bathed despite back being like 80 or 90 years old. I am not kidding about that. She calls up Druid, and she ran a called the Daughters of Liberty. And by the way, in this book, they are not mentioned. As a matter of fact, they make zero appearances in this entire book. As of recently, she's still referred to as a Jew in later issues. As the book says when she's working for somebody, like, that makes no freaking sense. She runs her own organization. Did the writers basically forget what happened in the previous volume of the series? Apparently. There's also this stuff with <coughs> Steve getting his, like, his new apartment, which is strange. I thought he had a house in Virginia. I thought he had I thought he had a house he owned with Sharon. Did he and Sharon break up again? I don't know. Because the book itself does not explain where the heck Sharon is. Because in the previous book, she got the age to her natural age. Thanks to, believe it or not, sucking some aging sucking ability from Celine. Yes. Seriously. They had de-aged her from the old, uh, like, what was her name? Oh, yeah. Sue Carter. Oh, Sharon. She was old Sharon Carter for quite some time since Rick Remender's run. And then, of course, during the previous run, she got finally got the age because I think some people were getting a little tired of seeing the, the, the smoking hot baby that was Sharon Carter be an old lady. And the previous writer... Probably felt this though. Yeah, that was a stupid idea to keep her old. So he basically de-aged her. And then you get this run like, wait, where's Sharon? Yeah, where the heck is Sharon? She was nowhere to be seen in this book. Her aunt is here, but Sharon is not. Which makes no freaking sense. Yeah, there's also a subplot here with Capcus's apartment. And 
where he's got like a boy next door, like a little boy who's like his neighbor, which, okay, interesting. And mostly put basically like, this feels like something out of the 80s with him having a, having a renting an apartment. I'm thinking, he's Captain America. I'm sure he's got lots of money from the government due to the fact he's their government. He's basically their poster boy. Steve Rogers has been, despite the fact that he would not agree with some of the ideas he's had over the decades. Because, well, in the last several years because of the Hydra Cap stuff. But no, he's renting an apartment despite the fact he had a house. Yes, he, had, he owned an actual house. Apparently, this writer writers for, for completely forgot about that and his girlfriend. Yes, which by the way, as soon as Sharon got de-aged, like less than a day after she got de-aged, Sharon and Steve had sex because it's been a long time since they had it. Yep, and where well, and of course in the case of Bucky, he of course like the way he's written here is kind of like he's a mixture of James Bond and the question from DC Comics because there's like this poster board with like this various stuff connecting everywhere. That's something the question would do, not Winter Soldier who is an assassin. Why the heck would he be investigating something like this? Which is odd for him. And what's the point of this? This is a future crossover between this title and the, and the Spirit Troop book called Cold War. Yes, where Bucky encounters revolution, fights him, and murders him, takes a spot in this group. Excuse me, you might be asking, why the heck would he do this? Answer, no idea. No idea indeed. It is something that is never explained at all in this whole book of why Bucky, why Bucky is acting this way. Yeah. Winter Soldier, why the heck you act this way? Why you act like a spy even though you're an assassin? Yeah, it, it's like it's like Winter Soldier is being completely out of character. Like, I like the whole undercover stuff. That was quite interesting of an idea. And, of course, at one point you have Steve basically holding on to Bucky. And he detaches his, his second arm. Yes, his second arm. And he detaches a new one. Yes. There's also someone called, like, the Eraser who wants to Steve Rogers of History. Yeah, and of course, takes them to their base, which is like a secret city in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, okay. And it's almost like reading this book, it's like, wow, it's like the rarest book to inspiration from the Shield book by John Hickman and Dustin Weaving. Yeah, the whole thing was Secret City. Yeah, that's a, that's a take on that Shield book, which I love that book. The book was awesome. I'm like, Captain America deal with Secret City? Like, this I thought was kind of weird. Now, it feels as though, like, I get the fact they're trying to take this character in a new direction. Fine. But it's like, why the heck are we basically playing seeds for a future crossover happening very soon? As a matter of fact, it's happening in the next few issues of the main book. It's it's pretty good for what it is. I like the artwork. The artwork is pretty good. But there's lots of questions related to this book. Where is Sharon? Why is Steve renting an apartment instead of having living in his own house? And also, why is there any Avengers pop in this book? Because last time I checked, he's still a member of the Avengers. And yet in this book there's there's no Avengers to be seen, aside from well like actually there's none. It just basically capitalized so it's almost like they took it back to basically where it was during Brubaker's run, where you barely had any to show up, and of course they had occasionally show up, but there's no appearance. But as a matter of fact, they've not appeared in this book at all. In like uh nine issues released so far for this whole volume. By the way, this book collects the first six issues of this run. Now like the Spirit of Truth, which that apparently is counted as part of the numbering for Captain America, this book isn't. For some reason, it isn't. I have no idea why. It is by far one of the strangest ideas I have ever seen uh, Marvel do with this book. Where Falcon's book, Sam Wilson as Captain America, his book, part of the Lancus numbering. This book, the, the original Captain America, his book, not part of numbering. Yeah, I even think it's kind of weird Marvel went back to this after they basically said we're not going to do any, we're not going to do the whole two Captain America books anymore after the Empire. 
And apparently they just went back in the word and said last year, oh, we're going to have two Captain America books again for the first time in four years after having a one Captain America book. One. Because basically, after Secret Empire, he had two full volumes of Captain America. First by Mark Wade, and then the other one by uh, the writer who wrote the previous volume for Black Panther. Which, of course, the current Black Panther is actually ending with the very next issue, believe it or not. Yep. So you read these six issues like, wow, this is a lot of setup for something that was going to happen. And it's set up for a crossover. That's all this book is. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for particular view. Next up is going to be our view for Is It Wrong? No, not that one. Uh, case Close is next. Because I really want a Case Close update. Okay, next view.